What is going on guys? So in this video, we are going to go over the top 10 meta sets you need to be using in ESO PvP. I wanted to do a video that covered several different builds and classes to give you guys a bit more general knowledge to help you through your craft and find the best setup for you. Doesn't matter what build or class you play, there's something for you in this video. But before we get started, if you guys are newer to PvP, I created the ESO Academy Discord server. It is designed as a resource to either help you start or improve at PvP in ESO. We have several hundreds of members that are growing by the day. We would love to have you join. It doesn't matter your experience or skill level, we are here to help. If you guys are interested, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to do the YouTube things, like and subscribe and comment. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So for the first set, we have Plague Break. This gives a two piece of offensive penetration, a three and a four piece of both weapon and spell damage, and a five piece dealing direct damage to an enemy who is not a plague carrier turns them into a plague carrier for 10 seconds, dealing disease damage over the duration. If the plague is removed early, it explodes, infecting enemies within 8 meters of the carrier and dealing disease damage. The explosion deals an additional 50% per enemy hit. This effect can occur once per attack and scales with the higher of your weapon or spell damage. You can get plague break two different ways. The first way is going to be the hardest and more difficult, is to just get it randomly from the rewards of the worthy. So as you can alliance points, you'll get a reward in the mail and you have a random chance to get any of the PVP item sets from there. The easiest way is to just buy it from the guild traders. This necessarily have to be even perfect traits. You can always tra change it later if you need to uh, at the transportation station. So Plague Break is actually one of the most versatile sets in the entire game. You can use this on pretty much any class and any build and it would do just fine. What makes this set so powerful is not only does it have a single target damage over time effect that does disease damage, but also if somebody cleanses the effect off of them, or if they die, they explode. This is so powerful for battleground environments or even going on to in Cyrodiil where there's people on flags and there's guards because there's procs on guards and you can hit several people and they all can explode at once and die in PvP. And it leads for some insane clips. Plague Break has to be one of my favorite sets in the game. I think it's really solid for 1vx situations where you can kill one or two people and put a lot of pressure on the other group members and even killing them sometimes. With the new buff to the Occult Overload next patch, this set, in my opinion, is gonna be one of the best sets to use in PvP. So for the next set we have is Draugrkin's Grip. This gives you a two piece of max magic, a three piece of offensive penetration, a four piece of magic recovery, and the five piece dealing direct damage to an enemy places a ghostly curse on your enemy for six seconds. Cursed enemies take 617 extra damage from all of your damage abilities. This effect can occur once every nine seconds. So something I do want to mention here is Draugrkins is actually getting changed next patch in the High Isle DLC. I think it'll still be very strong. It'll just be for a few different classes, not so much on stamina builds anymore, but I think specifically for the Magical Warden, it's going to be a must have. So what they're training this set to on the five piece is it's going to increase your damage done by 330, but it reduces your healing taken rather than giving you the Ghost of Curse that increases the damage taken by 617 six seconds so it has no cooldown now but it reduces the damage pretty much in half and now you take less healing so i know overall people are going to be like oh this set is, is kind of dead now definitely recommend checking out my video that i specifically talk about draugrkins i'll link that in the video here but you can get draugrkins from the dungeon on hollowed grave you do have to have the harrow storm dlc to obtain this set so draugrkins is used specifically on the front bar and i'm talking about for both the current version and also the version of next patch because the healing receiver is definitely going to be a pretty big deal. So Draugrkins allows you to, whenever you deal damage, it gets an added 330 extra damage on your attacks. This is powerful for a few different situations. If you're going to be a dot focus build with using poisons, but also if you have multi hit attacks, for example, force pulse, this skill will get multi hits, increasing the overall damage that Draugr can can help you increase your DPS because you're dealing flame damage, frost damage, and shock damage, and all that's going to get an added 330 extra damage. It's going to make it for insane single target pressure. Now, the reason why Draugrkins, I'm viewing this as a buff next patch is because it's now going to apply to all of your effects, and it's not just on one person. It's going to be on multiple people. So skills like Dawnbreaker, if you hit multiple people, all that's going to get extra damage. Northern Storm, Shocks, uh, you have impulse, any type of area of effect attack is going to get that added 330 extra damage bonus, which again, I think will help in outnumber situations extremely, especially on the magic warden. Now, this isn't going to be for every class necessarily, but I think for the magic warden, 
you're really going to need this set to help you kill people and put a lot of pressure on. For the next set, we have a Deadly Strike. This gives you a two piece of weapon and spell damage, a three piece of critical chance, a four piece of weapon and spell damage, and the five piece increases the damage or damage over time and channel abilities do by 15%. So you can get Deadly Strike from Cyrodiil at the Velastris Town. There's a vendor over there that sells the item set and you get to test your luck and see what you can get from the reward coffers. You can also buy this from the Guild Traders, which is probably going to be the best bet so you don't have to go into Cyrodiil to buy it. So Deadly Strike is a very simple set to understand. So this is going to increase the damage over time and channel ability. So this is going to affect Templars and dot heavy classes like Dragonite or any build that wants to focus on damage over time effects. If you want to use like Blood Craze, Venom Claw, Noxious Breath, and just want to go pure dot heavy, then Deadly Strike is probably one of your best sets. For Templar, this is another very strong front barbable set. Mainly going to be for the stamina Templar though. Magic Templar uses can use Deadly for sure, but they're, they sometimes use more Clever Alchemist and whatnot on the front bar, which I just personally prefer. I don't really like Deadly on the Magic Templar as much as I do on the Stamina Templar. But overall, it's a solid option and it's definitely worth a try uh, if this set is readily available to you. For the next set, we have Calrian's Legacy. This gives you a two piece of critical chance, a three piece of weapon and spell damage, a four piece of critical chance, and the five piece, when you deal critical damage with a light or heavy attack, you launch a projectile at your target that deals flame damage, frost damage, or disease damage, and applies the respective status effect. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. So you can get Calrian's Legacy from the dungeon Fang Lair, and you do have to have the Dragon Bones DLC to obtain this set. So Calrian's Legacy is one of the highest burst potential proc sets in the entire game. This will remove hairlines guaranteed. This is going to be mainly used on the Nightblade class. The reason being is whenever you use Shadowy Disguise, you guarantee a critical strike on your next attack after you come out of Cloak. So when you come out of Cloak, you guarantee that critical light attack. If you just light attack or heavy attack, whatever the case is. And then that Calrian's Legacy is zooming at somebody's forehead. If you hit them with a spice attack afterwards and stun them, that Calrian's is pretty much going to be a guaranteed proc on them. It just allows for so much burst potential and pairs so very nicely with the Nightblade class. Either Magicka or Stamina, it doesn't matter. It's really going to help a lot with your burst potential. Other classes can use this set. However, it's much more reliable and much easier to proc whenever you can guarantee that critical strike on that light attack. Next, we have Burning Spell Weave. This gives you a two piece of max magic, a three piece of weapon and spell damage, a four piece of critical chance, and the five piece, when you deal damage with a flame damage ability, you apply the burning status effect to the enemy and increases your weapon and spell damage by 490 for eight seconds. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds. You can get Burning Spell Weave from City of Ash. This is a base game dungeon, so anybody can obtain this set. So Burning Spell Weave is going to be a Dragon Knight's best friend. This is going to increase your damage by 490 whenever you deal flame damage. And since the hybridization of most abilities, some stamina Dragon Knights are even using Burning Embers. So this can pair very nicely with Burning Spell Weave. And obviously a Magic of DK is going to love this set as well. But it doesn't even have to be Dragon Knight's best friend. You can use this on a Templar. You can use this on a Magic of Necromancer with Blast Bones. There's just so many different options that you have to use burning spell weave now it's not the end all be all type of set like play break but it has some very neat situations where this is going to give you a lot of damage which doesn't only increase the damage that you deal but also gives you some more healing potential as well as this buff does transfer over to your back bar overall you really can't deny that burning spell weave is one of the best sets right now for pvp next we have wretched vitality this gives you a two piece of mag recovery a three piece of stamina recovery a four piece of both weapon and spell damage and the five piece while in combat, applying a major buff or debuff to a target grants you 260 magicka and stamina recovery for 15 seconds. While in combat, applying a minor buff or debuff to a target grants you 130 magicka and stamina recovery for 15 seconds. So Wretched Vitality is a craftable item set. Now you don't have to have the Deadlands DLC in order to craft it, but you just have to have access to the crafting station. It could be at a guild house or something like that, as long as Wretched Vitality is there. But you do have to have three traits researched to craft any of the items in this set. So Wretched Vitality is the king of sustain. There's no doubt in my mind this is one of the best sustain sets in the game. Now sometimes at higher end levels you really don't need a lot of sustain. But typically whenever you're a newer player and you're struggling with your offstat resource. Typically for magic build trying to sustain their stamina. This will definitely solve a lot of those issues. Sure you're not getting a lot of damage from this set. However that does not mean that you cannot go full damage on your jewelry at this point to push your damage as high as you can. 
Wretched Vitality is so easy to proc. You can use this on several different builds. For example, on the Magical Warden, you can hit your armor buff, the Ice Fortress, and that'll give you major resolve and minor protection, giving you both buffs of Wretched Vitality. Rally procs this skill, Race Against Time procs this. There are just several different abilities that you can back bar on this build and it'll proc all of those buffs for you and give you that a lot of recovery that you need. I think Wretched Vitality is one of the best beginner sets that you can use in PvP, mainly because at lower CP level, you don't have a lot of extra sustain and Wretched Vitality will solve all of those issues and more to help you compete in PvP. Next, we have Rallying Cry. This gives you a two piece of critical chance, a three piece of max magic, a four piece of critical chance, and a five piece. While Battle Spirit is active, critically healing yourself or an ally causes you and up to 11 other group members within 12 meters to gain 300 weapon and spell damage and 1650 critical resistance for 20 seconds. Each member affected reduces the weapon and spell damage by 15 and critical resistance by 83. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. So you can get the Rallying Cry set from two different ways, Rewards of the Worthy from your mail, from getting Alliance points, or you can always buy it from the Guild Traders, which is going to be definitely the easiest way to get it. So Rallying Cry is one of the new sets on the block that just got released just about a patch ago. And this is one of the best offensive sets for PvP hands down. If you are solo, you're going to get 300 weapon and spell damage and also the 1650 critical resistance which is about 25% critical damage mitigation, making you insanely tanky versus any critical strikes like for Nightblades, Templars, any really high burst, most of the time it's from critical strikes and reducing that by 25% is insane. This set is powerful assault and transmutation put together and they're honestly the best of both worlds. They have a high buff time, it gives you the damage and it gives you the critical resistance. Now the only downsides to this set is if you are in a larger group you know if you are probably six or more this set may not be as important or you really want to run it and sure you could definitely run it for sure but it's going to benefit smaller group and this is where this set really shines the most so rallying cry is one of the best offensive sets in the entire game and it gives you a good balance of damage and mitigation as well you can use this on pretty much any class but i prefer this on a warden and the templar the most and that does not mean that you cannot use this on a nightblade or a dragonite or necromancer or sork but I just feel like there's different options for those classes that Rallying Cry just doesn't fulfill all the needs that, that they need on that build. The next set we have Daedric Trickery. This gives you a two piece of maximum health, a three piece of maximum stamina, a four piece of maximum magic, and the five piece when you deal damage, you gain one of five random major buffs for 21 seconds every nine seconds. Eligible buffs are Expedition, Protection, Mending, Heroism, or Vitality. So Daedric Trickery is just like Wretched Vitality. If you have access to the crafting station, you don't have to go to the zone of Morrowind or have access to that DLC in order to, to make this set. But you do have to have eight traits research to be able to craft any items you want. So Daedric Trickery is another one of the best offensive sets in the game. Now this is really widely used on the Dragonite class. The main reason being is the extra heroism that you get because DKs have a passive called Battle Roar and the more ultimates they push out, the overall more sustain that they're going to get back whenever they use their ultimate but well, it doesn't even have to be just dragonized as well you can use this on pretty much any class i used this on my templar before heck you can even use this on the warden which is overall you're going to get really really good buffs from this set so all you have to do is deal damage and you can typically do that through a few different ways on your back bar if you lie attack weave if you have some type of damage over time effect and then swap bars it's going to easily proc this set to give you that extra buff now, Expedition is going to give you speed. Protection is going to give you 10% extra mitigation. Mending is going to give you 16% healing done. Vitality is going to give you 16% healing received. And Heroism is going to give you three ultimate every 1.5 seconds. So all of these buffs are great. They last for 21 seconds. So that's a very long time to have access to protection or to mending to give you the extra healing potential and keep you alive longer uh, in the fight. The next set, we have Olerim. This gives you a two piece of magic recovery, a three piece of minor Aegis, a four piece of magic recovery. And if you do have the perfected version, you get an extra 1096 magic. If you don't have the perfected version, you don't get the extra magicka on the five piece, but you do get access to everything else. So casting abilities that leave an effect on the ground while in combat will create a circle of might for five seconds. You and your group members in the circle gain major courage for 20 seconds, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 430 for 20 seconds. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. So you can get Olarim from the trial called Cloudrest. Now you can run this on normal and get the non-perfected version 
which works just fine. But if you want to try your luck and do this on Veteran, you can always do that and get the perfected version of this set. Ulrim is one of the best back bar sets for Templars. However, Rallying Cry has gave it a run for its money, giving you the extra mitigation. But if you want pure group damage and your group already has access to Rallying Cry, Ulrim is a very strong set. So this is going to give you 430 extra weapon and spell damage. And this is going to be insane for your group. It's going to be insane just even for solo play or even a duo play running somebody running Rallying Cry in Olarim, that's upwards of 700 extra damage that you can give each other, which is absolutely insane. But this set procs from using a ground-based ability. So there are several skills that do it. Templar's Rune Focus does it. Budding Seeds on the Warden. Cinder Storm on the Dragon Knight. Any ground-based area of effect that puts a, something on the ground, it's going to proc Olarim and it's going to give you a lot of extra damage. Overall, this is one of the best back barbell sets for most magic classes as most stamina classes really don't need the extra magic recovery. And leaving one of the best sets for last, we have Clever Alchemist. This gives you a two and a three piece of both maximum health, a four piece of weapon and spell damage, and the five piece. When you drink a potion during combat, you feel a rush of energy, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 675 for 20 seconds. So just like Trickery and Rets of Vitality, this is a craftable set, and you need access to the Thieves Guild DLC or the crafting location in a guild house or something like that. But you do need seven traits research to be able to craft any of the items in this set. So they should change this set honestly to Old Faithful instead of Cover Alchemist, because this is what it is. This set has been one of the best back barbell, even front barbell sets for upwards of two to three years at this point. And his reign has no end in sight. Now this is not going to be used on every class. I personally hate this set on the Dragonite, but any other class, Clever Alchemist is one of the best options that you have. It's going to give you a whopping 675 extra damage whenever you're in outnumbered situations i understand that most people don't like using their potion offensively however whenever you're getting a lot of pressure on you you really don't have an offensive window to put pressure on people however when you pop the clever alchemist it's going to give you a massive damage boost that's going to give you a window to really nuke a lot of people i used to hate this set a long long time ago i've grown accustomed to it and i definitely recommend any newer player that says, oh, I've tried Clever Alchemist, I just don't, don't like it, or just does this or doesn't do that. I'm telling you guys, Clever Alchemist is going to really change the way you play in outnumber situations. And is my opinion, the king of all the meta sets, I don't care what it is, nobody can deny Clever Alchemist is one of the best sets in the entire game for PvP. So that pretty much wraps up the top 10 meta sets for PvP right now. You could take one of the favorite front barable sets like Plague Break, slap a back bar set on there like Rallying Cry. There is a good solid build that you can put on pretty much any build and it would do just fine. Pick your favorite mythic item like Majesty, Death Dealers, Malakath, stop on your monster set like Bloodspawn, Lore, Magma, whatever you prefer. And there is a good solid starting build that you can test and try out right now and that you made and that you can adapt to your own play style and preferences. This is just a basic top 10 set that you can use for whatever you need it for. But well, that's it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.